Michelle from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer, and today we're here with Gordon Southern. Hello, Lucinda. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Already a little bit sweaty from the running around. Yeah. <laughs> what, what have you been up to this morning? This morning, um, got out of bed, spoke to my wife, who's producing Late and Live, so she was telling oh, me wow, the gossip cool. from the night before, and then did a gig at the Pleasance, which was good fun, with uh, a few mates, one of whom walks on stage. There's a 12-year-old boy sat in the front row, oh. and he just starts turning the air blue. And I've never seen a mother and son leave a venue so quickly. <laughs> just, this isn't for you, son. Cover your ears. Oh, in. dear. So that was exciting. A 12 year old's allowed in? Yeah. Oh, right, okay, probably. It's ostensibly a family show, but not every oh, comedian right, okay. yeah. wants to play along with that. <laughs> so your show's called The Kerfuffle? My show is called The Kerfuffle, which, um, of course, is a lovely Scottish word meaning unnecessary fuss. Yeah. Which I think is fair to say the whole Edinburgh Festival could be described yes. as an unnecessary <laughs> fuss. Kerfuffle, yeah. And yeah, it's kind of the story of the last two years of my life, because last year I did a a research-based show about the history of the world. So this year's show is about uh, some family stuff, the state of the nation as I see it, and then at the end, a massive story where I meet a member of the royal family. I can say no more. <laughs> yeah, leave it for people to find That's, Yeah, otherwise it'd be a spoiler. Yeah, exactly. Um, so how did you get into comedy in the first place? Oh my goodness, way, way back <laughs> when I was a student at Warwick University, me and my mates put on a sketch show called The Cheese Shop which was in the 90s, I'm guessing you were still in school then. Yeah, I Yep, <laughs> and uh, we came to Edinburgh a few times, ran around club, had a ra few Radio 4 seasons, and then while I was doing that, I just realised that my true calling was to do stand-up comedy, so that gradually took over. Yeah. Brilliant, so you've done a lot of TV and radio work, and Over writing the years, and loads, things. yeah, and yeah. writing for other shows. So tell us a bit about your TV work and your radio well, work. Well, um, the last TV I did would have been in, in Australia. I did the, their version of Have I Got News For You, which is yeah. called Good News Week a couple of years ago. And something I'm fiercely proud of, I've written from Ronnie Bloody Corbett. That's yes, amazing. jaw dropping. I yeah, saw it. It's yeah. jaw It's just one joke on his Christmas special, but oh, having so cool. grown up watching the two Ronnies, I was pleased as punch. So you've performed in some very exotic places all over the world. Isn't oh, it? I love going overseas, me. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the last one? I headlined the Serbian Comedy Festival. Wow. That's right, they've got one. That's Belgrade. Cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised so what was as it well. Like performing there as opposed to performing well, here. Well, I turned same. up, and because I knew what the fee was, I thought it would just be a small pub gig. And it's this huge, sort of 1950s Soviet era punishment block theatre. This strange, sort of angular, abstract building. I go in, it's 600 people. Wow. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was massive. And they go, oh, can, thank you so much for headlining our comedy festival. And I went, I should have got paid more. <laughs> yeah. Was that, was that nerve wracking? No, it was really good fun, actually. Brilliant. I loved it. But, you know, because so, you get to go to really sort of weird and wonderful places doing comedy. So I've done yeah. lots of stuff in Australia, which is sort of like my second home. But also, you know, weird ones like Norway last year. That was fantastic. Who'd have thought it? Well, you'll know this being Scottish. Norway mm -hmm. has lots of money because they've got yeah. most of the gas and oil that you think you're going to get when you <laughs> get independence. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, so, what have you got planned after the fringe for the next sort of year ahead? After the fringe, a um, couple of weeks to recover. My best mate's moved to Ibiza, so I'll oh, go wow. and hang out with him for a little bit. Um, then it's the Hull Comedy Festival, Newcastle Comedy Festival, Christmas with the family, and then in January, the wife and I go to Australia. And by the end of February, we're halfway through the Adelaide Fringe already. So the merry-go-round continues. So very, very busy. Yeah, lots of bunting, lots of fairy lights. That's <laughs> so festivals. when and where is your show on? My show is at the Gilded Balloon at the Sportsman's Bar. I'll do it right into the camera, yeah, shall I? Yeah. My show, dear viewer, is at the Gilded Balloon Sportsman's Bar, 5.45, every day. It's called The Kerfuffle. Sold out for the entire run at Melbourne. Yeah. That's great. Not sold out yet here, so come along. Hopefully we'll be soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming and speaking Thanks to us. Thanks for having me. Great meeting you. I'm Lucinda Shale. You're watching Waffle TV. <laughs> Great. That was brilliant. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, mate. Thanks. Hey.